Welcome back to the channel. Today I think we're going to have a pretty fun, simple, and educational one for you. We are going to put Windows 11 on this brand new PC over here. It's brand new, nudge nudge, wink wink, because right now it has no partitions on the drive, nothing. It's been wiped completely clean. If you have only subscribed to this channel, this machine is the culmination of about a year and a half of events of upgrading a factory Dell into a standalone PC. And now that I have the Dell completed, this is the standalone PC that came out of it, so I need another seat of Windows to use my new PC. So I'm not expecting this to be a real big deal. I'm expecting it to be about like installing Windows 10. I want to say ever since around XP-ish, you have been able to download the Windows installation file straight from Microsoft. No piracy or shenanigans or anything required. It is the license key that they put on lockdown. To that end, the most assured way to get a valid license key is to buy it from Microsoft or from... Microsoft via Amazon, like Microsoft's Amazon Store, or probably places like Newegg or Best Buy. Uh, you can buy physical USB installation media. I think they'll even sell you an optical disc if they, you want to buy one. But what we are going to do today is make our own installation media just with a generic USB stick. This was pretty much the cheapest one I could find the day I went to buy them. I will link some cheap ones in the description. It should not take uh, anything real special to get it done. So don't spend any kind of real special amount of money to do it. Oh, the cheapest one of any kind of known quality, I should say. I like to stick to like SanDisk, Samsung, Kingston, name brands basically. And since we are not a monster, we're going to label it because that is all we're ever going to use it for is Windows 10 installation files. Yeah, Cricket's fine. That'll annoy the right people. Speaking of annoying people, let's go ahead and use Windows XP to make our Windows 11 boot media. Should be a good time. Rather than link you in the description for where to go to download this, I always suggest to people just Google it every time because the addresses change over time. So Windows 11 installation files. Sounds good. What I want to do is create installation media. So let's check the before I begin, if I can. There we go. It may or may not actually stand by this. Windows 10 was the same thing. It's telling you that it wants to see a license before it'll even let you download. That's not true. Uh, we should be able to download an ISO and, and burn it to a drive if we have to. So anyway, or use the media creation tool. Let's see if it'll let us. Oh, that is the creation tool. Sure. Yep. Oh, crap. It's 64-bit. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That XP wouldn't let us do it. Oh, man. I could burn the ISO, but burning an ISO to a USB stick is sort of a pain in the butt. <laughs> nah. Foiled again. We're just going to have to do it in Windows 10. Boo-hoo. That was stupid while we tried. Nah, screw it. Let's burn an ISO with XP. I don't want to give up. 5.2 gigs. Cool. Oh boy. Now I gotta remember how to burn an ISO. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're gonna need another utility to burn it. Now keep in mind, if you're not a crazy person and you're actually using a modern operating system to do this, you would not have to jump through all these hoops. And these security issues are because I'm using Windows XP. <laughs> ah, Rufus won't run on XP. And I also think that it's going this slow because of this ancient laptop. It should not take six hours to download the ISO. So, all right. I tried to use a 20 year obsolete operating system and it didn't go our way. I tried. I tried, dang it. All right, enough doinking around. Let's go for the installation tool. I'm going to assume that we would need to run that as administrator. It's already going much better than it was with XP. Ah, you win some, you lose some. I agree to everything. You can have my kidneys. Do not do that. So I do want 11, but I want 11 Pro. That is the license I intend to buy, so. Yep, flash drive. Sounds good, that's the guy we want. I would hope this doesn't take five hours, but 
I'm probably not going to sit here and watch it and find out if it does. It looks like while I was out of the room, it got everything all done on its own. So I guess the next thing to do is just get set up to give it a shot. And, you know, finish, I guess. So we got our USB stick. Let's get it plugged in. Fired up and see what happens. That's a good sign. The Windows dots are a good sign, too. All right. And we are in. Yep, we want English. We want the U.S. We want install now. We don't have a key. I'm going to select Windows 11 Pro. Uh, most of you will probably be just fine with the home edition. Save a couple bucks there on your license. Yeah, all the terms. Despite it giving us these options, it won't actually accept the upgrade because this is a completely empty disk. As you can see right here, no partitions, nothing. So that is what we're going to select. Also a good time to mention, I advise that you only have the drive that you want to install Windows on in the system while you do this. So it'll just make it easier for you to avoid confusion. So that's what we want. All right, copying Windows files, getting ready for installation. Hopefully this is not going to be any big deal. Take a few minutes is my guess. Okay, it looks like we're going to restart. Uh, hello? Are you there? Oh, it's rebooting. Okay, Windowsy things are happening. That's good. Yep. United States is fine with me. Yep. Nope. We are not going to connect. Yep, continue with limited setup. I do everything I possibly can to not have a Microsoft account or to have my machines at least not be tied to a Microsoft account. I think it's the most intrusive thing possible of Microsoft to do. We're going to name this one Not Adele. Absolutely none of these things. These are all the super intrusive things. Well, there's some of the super intrusive things. Just make sure they're all turned off. It'll be a cleanup later to continue to turn more things off. Hello. Alrighty. Looks like we're in like sin. Okay. I advise you to despamify your Windows installation as much as possible. I also personally hate the center taskbar layout here. If I wanted Mac OS, I would get Mac OS. Yeah, so we're going to right click, taskbar settings. The search is always Bing, which is garbage, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Not really a fan of task view, don't really care about widgets, don't like chat. Taskbar behaviors. We are going to move it to the left where it belongs. That's where you can hide it. It'll disappear until you get down there. Up to you whether or not you like those sort of things. Yeah, you know, I like that personally. So if I go down here, it'll show the desktop. So, yep, fine with me. Despam, we're gonna right click, unpin. Same thing with Edge. The only thing I'll need that for is to download Firefox. You go back to all apps in there. Sadly, at least the last time I looked, there is no all apps default for Windows 11. So you kind of have to do that every time. My opinion is you should go down through all this stuff and right click it and check the settings and make sure that none of these things have anything set for permissions that they shouldn't. Like the calculator could have permission to see my camera if I had one. Apparently there are no permissions for that, so whatever. Yeah, we're just going to say never. Yeah, so basically just go through all this stuff and make sure that everything it's doing is something you want it to do as much as you can. And then I'm going to unpin that as well, although I don't think it took. Yeah. And we'll get rid of stuff I know I'm not going to be using. Ah, uh, straight cancer that is Cortana. Absolutely not. No, wrong kind of thing. 
Yeah, like, I would turn all this stuff off if I were you. Set all the things to never. Okay. You guys get the idea. I'm going to right click out here and go to my display settings. Because the taskbar and stuff is just a little big for my taste. I like 125%. That is where you go to change that if you would like to. Oops. That was me just hitting the reset button on the top of the PC, which I'm more and more learning is a terrible place to put it. I may actually just unplug it on this one, but Windows is none too happy about it. It's taking forever to reboot. And it doesn't look like it preserved my display preferences. Oops, I guess now we know. All right, well, you get the idea with all that. Now I'm going to network connect it. And if you weren't following before, the reason I didn't have it connected to the network straight away is because Microsoft makes it very difficult to install Windows if it is connected to a network. If it's connected, it wants you to log into a Microsoft account no matter what. It's always a good time remembering my Wi-Fi password. I would not like to do that. I'm gonna reboot it just to make sure everything is kosher. Actually, let me take my USB stick out. Did it notify me when I wasn't looking or? Yeah, must have. Okay, now we're gonna reboot it. We'll see if it gives me a bunch of grief for not signing in a Microsoft account or what. Not so far. Connected to my Wi-Fi. All right then. My guess is it's gonna give us 30 days to activate it, but we'll just go ahead and do it now. It's interesting. It should not be. This is not the first time this hardware has had Windows on it. Um, it had a, a seat of my Dell installation on it, but that license should have gone. Wonder. Okay, well, whatever. This is where you would go to enter your license key. If one or the other machine starts complaining at me, which I would imagine it will soon, um, that's when I'll go buy a license and plug it in. But this is where you would do it. I'm going to say this is just an interesting quirk of my particular hardware at the moment. And there you have it. That is how you install Windows 11 from scratch on a brand new build. Outside of me just trying to have some fun with the Windows XP stuff, this is really straightforward operation. But it does illustrate one of the reasons why you need to stay at least remotely on top of your Windows installations. Because eventually, they will just leave you behind. To be honest, I did happen to think about it. I have another XP computer. It's actually just right down there that has a version of Rufus on it that would have burned that ISO image onto a USB stick. But why? You know, other than just for the fun of the video, eh, we're just not going to even worry about stuff like that. But it's not too hard to do. It's something that I think that even if you buy a boxed PC from the store, you may well be advised to just go ahead and nuke all the partitions off of the drive it comes with if you have another PC to work with so you can do that and then start over from zero so you don't get all the crapware spam and all that stuff that like Dell or HP or whatever includes with their prepackaged solutions and you just get the crap that Microsoft includes. But speaking of crap, appreciate you guys sitting through this video. It's about all I've got for it and we will catch you on the next one. I'm Max E. Saddington Bear and if you like that video, hey, like the video. If you'd like to watch some more of them, here's some more for you. And if you want to come back and watch more, always consider becoming a subscriber. And we'd like to thank you once again from the bottom of both our hearts for stopping in.